Hey everybody, it's Lo and welcome back to my channel, Low Without Limits. In this video, I'm going to share with you some moves and tips that you can use to strengthen your knees so they stop caving in. So if you wanna see that, then just keep watching. That was one of the first intros that I've done in a very long time where it actually just took me one take and I was like, yes, I'm, I'm happy with that. I nailed it. But anyway, this video is all about strengthening your knees and some tips and some moves that you can incorporate into your warmups or just into some daily mobility routines. That way you can have stronger knees, better squats and do every single leg exercise with proper form and not risking injury. So if you've ever squatted and you're on your way down or you're coming back up and your knees have gone from going over your second and third toe into caving in a little bit, that is what I learned in my personal training certification is called knee valgus. And it's because your hip adductors, that part of your inner thigh that a lot of people like to work and squeeze their legs on that little machine that you don't really need to do. Those are taking over because there's something that's weaker in that part of your kinetic chain. And now I too am guilty of wiggly knees in the past, especially if I'm putting a little bit too much weight on the bar that my body just wasn't ready for. And again, this is because there could be an issue not in your knees necessarily, although I've always blamed my bad knees after years of volleyball and you throw yourself on the ground, but it could also be due to an issue in the joint below your ankles and feet or the joint above your hips. So looking at those and seeing where you may have some poor mobility there is also really important to help your knees because it's all connected. So I'm gonna be showing some moves for feet and ankle area, your knees and for your hips and also strengthening the proper muscles. So if your quads aren't strong enough or your glutes aren't strong enough, then your hip adductors, again, that muscle on your inner thigh is gonna be taking over. And when that pulls and contracts, it's going to contract your knees inward leading to knee valgus. It could also be due to tight calf muscles. So really stretching out and just having good dynamic warmups ahead of any leg day is super important and including some of these moves can also really help with strengthening the proper muscles, waking up the proper muscles, working those abductors, that part on your outer thigh, as well as your glute med in order to pull that knee back and contract that part of your leg so that way your knees are pointing a bit more outwards or a bit more straight over that second and third toe. Thankfully, this is something that's super easy to notice if you just feel it happening on yourself or if you're looking in a mirror, you see it or you film yourself and you're like, ooh, didn't realize that my knees came in a little bit. But it's also something that's really easy to adjust and to practice and strengthen the correct movements. That way, moving forward, you can do the moves better. You can do them with better form. You can strengthen the correct muscles instead of the muscles that are already overcompensating. So I'm going to stand up and show you some moves for again your ankles and your foot area your knees and your hips so starting from the bottom your feet are your base you're pushing through your feet in order to do a squat and again this does apply to other leg movements like it's super important to have good stable feet when you're doing any deadlift any form of the squat or you're even doing a leg press so step one is to watch your form especially looking at your feet your feet should be flat on the ground what i've learned in yoga is the three points, the tripod of each foot, your heel, the ball of underneath your big toe, and the ball underneath your little toe. So it's like a little triangle of your foot and you wanna be pushing down evenly through your foot. So take off your shoes and look at your feet barefoot before you put your shoes back on to go work out and really pay attention to what's going on. Are those three points stable the entire way through? Is your foot kind of rolling in a little bit? Because in doing so, that will contract a part of your calf and pull your knee inwards. Or on the way up, are you trying to push out too much, which is a different issue, but makes your knees point out more and then you're rolling off to the side of the foot and you don't have any of the weight on the ball of the foot. So while it's really important to think about your heels to drive up and drive through that movement, having a good mind muscle connection to your entire foot is the real key here. And it's really important and it's something that I've actually practiced a lot in yoga and just having that mind muscle connection to each part of your foot. So if you haven't tried yoga before, I seriously recommend it to Everyone, even if you're like, but I just like lifting weights and strength training and heavy weights, same, but yoga is honestly 
been such a game changer. And I'm actually gonna show you some exercises that I learned in physical therapy a few years back when I strained a ligament on my inner ankle on the left side. Doing all these physical therapy moves actually strengthened my feet and in turn helped me out once I did get to go back into the gym. And again, for this in particular and for strengthening your foot doing these moves, doing it barefoot, but when squatting, either doing it barefoot or wearing a flat shoe like a Converse. I love my flat dingy Converse that I think are gonna fall apart at any second now, like they are holding on by a thread. But at the same time, having that, having that flat sole, if you've looked into a Converse and it's just like flat, there's no arch support, there's no heel support. But because of that, because they're flat on the bottom, they're flat inside, so you can feel how your foot feels in there on a flat surface even though you're wearing a shoe. Whereas if you're wearing a gym shoe, like yes, I love my gym shoes, I love my On Clouds, I love my Allbirds, I love my Adidas, but I'm not gonna wear those during leg days because they have a little, the sole has like a little cushion in there. It has like a little cup for your little heel and it could be cushiony. Some of them are like really squishy, allowing your foot to move a little bit. It's not staying the most stable. Highly, highly recommend getting a flat shoe or even working out doing leg day barefoot. The first exercise I learned was the toe crunch in. So usually you can just add a little towel on the floor, practice crunching the towel and bringing it a lot closer to you. And this will strengthen your arch, strengthen your toes, really strengthen your entire foot and in turn strengthen your ankle since it is all connected. But you can do it without a towel too as I'm clearly doing here. Just making sure that you're using all of your toes. This is something that you can do sitting down at your desk super easy to do. Another one to strengthen the bottom of your foot as well as your toes because everybody's toes are always so crunched in from being in shoes all day. So allowing your toes to really spread out and to strengthen all of those muscles and stretch all of those muscles while they're small and they're in your foot and you don't think they're that important, they surprisingly are. They're what your entire body is based off of. So by really strengthening those out, push down in your big toe and lift up your others and using that mind-muscle connection, becoming more aware of your foot and pushing down your little toes, lifting up your big. So it's surprisingly a bit challenging, but just having that strength and really focusing on your toes and connecting to your feet is super important just for good walking and of course, good squats and strengthening your ankles. Something else to do is simply balancing. So having that connection with your heel, your big toe mound and your little toe mound and just balancing, keeping your body stacked up and really feeling all those muscles work. Of course, when you're squatting, you're squatting with both feet, so you don't have to have that balancing, but it's super important, especially if you wanna do a pistol squat, which I'm still working on, or any single leg deadlift, having good balance and stability in your foot, which is another reason Like you'll notice that all of those little muscles in there are contracting in order to keep my foot stable which is how it often feels if you're wearing just a regular workout shoe. So again, that is why flat shoes or barefoot is super important for leg days. So just balancing, keeping your body aligned upright over that leg. And if you really want to challenge your balancing, stretching your other leg out to the side while keeping this ankle, knee, and hip aligned with the balancing leg. Just a heads up, this is my less balanced size, my left side. And then from there, having your ankle stacked on top, your knee, again, you're not gonna rehearse this with your knee caving in already because that's just going to strengthen this, which we don't want. And then your hip on top, and then making it a challenge by expanding that leg out, forward. Can't really go to the back because of the door. If you've ever gone to physical therapy for any part of your foot or ankle, they'll have, they'll give you like a light medicine ball and say balance and reach. So you feel those muscles, you're working those muscles, having those little contractions in there. You even feel it throughout your entire leg, like a little leg workout. Trying to stay as stable as you can and doing that will also strengthen your hips, strengthen that glute med as you're doing that and as you're focusing on your knees not caving in keeping them in line. It is working your abductors, 
it's working your glute med and that helps with your knee valgus overall now I'm getting up to the knees so you can strengthen the muscles around the knees that will help them from caving in by doing just some light workouts adding some bands to some warm-up workouts using this as a warm-up before your leg day to help prime all of those moves and just kind of wake up and get those muscles ready and just not on a leg day on a chill day maybe at the end of yoga or if you have a bit of time like five to ten minutes every day in order to strengthen your glute med that side booty that little muscle there that will really help pull and contract your hip abductors which this will also strengthen a lot and will also just help strengthen your quads and your hamstrings too and that way your hip adductors aren't going to be the ones taking over so using these moves as a warm-up is really really good to say okay glute med okay hip abductors let's wake up because we're about to squat and i need you to be aware and i need to have that mind muscle connection by doing these lighter banded moves in order to do the move properly without my knees caving in. For the knee strengthening exercises, having just a little band like this will really help. So the first one is just some seated abductions. So this, just sit on the edge of your couch, on a chair, anything, just getting upright and allowing your knees to come out. You can go higher reps since you're just using a band for this. And for it, you're going to be strengthening all over here you can go slow really feel that contraction what you're trying to work is you're squeezing your glute med and your hip abductors this part of your thigh and it's another super easy one that you can just do sitting down watching tv throw a band on a few times a day to really strengthen that and it's also a really good one to warm up at the gym with. And of course, the classic one to help work out your abductors, just some crab walks, another really good one to warm up with before some squats. I like doing this with a hip circle at the gym just to give uh, even more resistance because hip circles are just so much stronger than these ones, but whatever you can do, whatever you can tolerate. And again, this is just to warm up. You're not really breaking a sweat, but doing this is turning on your glute med, getting your just your whole glute, your glute max warmed up and fired as well. That way you can get into the squat and it knows that it's going to be doing some work. And if you're working out at home and you want to challenge your body weight squats or you just want to warm up with some body weight squats before you start using the barbell at the gym, doing some squats and adding on that resistance band again, just to again, tell your brain, hey, we're gonna do some squats. Let's start to wake these muscles up, telling your knees, we have to push out against this, even though this is also making us wanna just go in and make it easy. We have to really push out against it, use that added resistance to train those muscles to turn on, train them to fire. So you can have a good squat and some healthy knees. Of course, another good move to warm up in prime activate your muscles before your leg day, or even just to do at home to challenge your move, is to do some hip bridges with abduction. So having those feet planted firmly, heels, big toe, little toe, going up, pushing your knees outward, they're turning out, your hips are turning up, your core is staying in, you're not allowing your lower back to arch. This is just your standard bridge, your knees are pointing, the same direction as your second third toe which is slightly out can also have your feet pointed directly straight ahead having a slight turn is just a bit more comfortable at least for me do it as you need and once you are at the top your hamstrings are contracting you're feeling it in your hamstrings and glutes doing an abduction similar to how we just did seated on the couch and this will really squeeze here in your glute med and coming back you can also just go up out back in, back down. So this you can again do as a warm up, do as a way to just break up sitting at your desk all day, or do as its own workout for like a resistance band, lower body workout that you can easily do at home. And last but not least, your hips could be the reason why your knees are caving in. We sit pretty much 
all day. At least I do if you're somebody with a more active job. Probably not before the majority of people. We're sitting all day, we're at our desk, so our hip flexors are super, super tight. And while we're sitting there, our glutes and our hamstrings are turning off because they're like, we don't really need to do anything. We're just like existing, kinda. Whereas your hip flexors are always in that tight, contracted position. So we need to relax those while strengthening our glutes. That way our glutes can work and that's what you're strengthening because that's what the move is to strengthen versus your hip flexors during certain exercises. And not only is it a matter of strengthening those muscles and relaxing your hip flexors, but also working on hip mobility to get a good range of motion, doing different hip mobility exercises again a few times throughout the day. These are also super good and easy to do, like get down on the floor five minutes every few hours because when you're sitting at your desk and your hip flexors are tight, getting on the floor and doing these moves feels so good. It helps improve your range of motion. And then you just don't feel as tight over time. And when you do get to go working out, you have that better range of motion and you're just feeling better overall. And now for some good hip moves, always a good warm up. It's just some good leg swings, getting that blood flowing there. When you go back, you're really stretching out your hip flexor. Just a really good warm up. Something you can do all the time. Love doing this at the start of every workout. Even before all of the other moves for mobility or for stretching or strengthening anything side to side. Just really making sure you're getting that stretch everywhere, feeling warmed up, having your knee trying to point out. And this will help if you ever feel any joint pain or clicking by keeping your leg not just flailing every direction. Another really good one is almost like you're moving your leg up and over something. And this will just start to warm up your hip socket. Just start to feel it here and sometimes this might start off really hard getting your foot up high enough as if you're going over something higher might be difficult so taking this at the level that you can and that last move how stepping over something is pretty similar to doing a fire hydrant so on your hands and knees it's a classic pilates move where you do like the little pulses but this is just more so for hip warming up increasing that range of motion so on your hands and knees, nice braced core, lifting your leg up. This is also something that you can add a band around your legs to add a bit more of a challenge. But just doing this to get that hip warmed up. I'm sitting down all day and you want to get a good stretch that way. Your hips are always mobile and they're feeling better even when you're not working out. And the next hip exercise that you can do for mobility is the 90-90. So this, just getting into the position could be hard if your hips are super tight, you don't have a great range of motion. So step one is just to get in the 90-90 position. And that is where you are sitting as upright as you can. One leg will be coming out directly to your side. Knee is turning out at a 90 degree angle. And then you also have a leg coming straight out. So this is a 90 degree angle. And then this up here is a 90 degree angle. We'll give you a little bit of a stretch here. Stretch out that hip flexor. And once you are in this position, you can challenge it by drawing your butt towards the ground, but leaning forward as much as you can. Stretching your glute a bit. Lean inside and lean like a little turn and lean. So in it, making sure that you can sit down. If you're coming up, then just working on this stretch until you can get all the way down. If you can't get your hips to open up this way, just working on this stretch until you can get into this position. So again, at 90 degrees, and then each leg is at 90 degrees. If this is challenging, make this goal one. If not, if you feel good in it, you can get down. You can do additional little stretching. Getting your low back, your glutes, off to the side a little bit. 
and then once you can get into this position on both sides one thing that I love to do as another good warm-up on leg days is to be in 99 position on one side and switch myself over to the other so this is just testing that range of motion I'm keeping my feet in pretty much the same spot there's gonna be some movement but doing this and then once I'm up you can even come up on your knees a little bit as a good dynamic warm-up for your hips for this joint for these muscles to get you prepped and ready to go on your leg day. And for all of these moves, whether it's one for your feet and ankles, for your knees or for your hips, really seeing like where you feel weakest, where you've noticed any pain or any tightness and focusing on those ones the most, but incorporating all of them either as a warm up before you go into your leg day. That way you can wake up and activate those muscles that you do want to work. And just again, throughout the day, as much as you need, if you do feel weaker or stiffer in certain spots, but even just for five, 10 minutes a day, once a day, every few days when you have time. If you do already feel good in those spots, but just want to make sure that they're feeling good, that they're feeling mobile, and that they're feeling strengthened. So how often you do it is really up to you and how severe your knee valgus may be. But by keeping it up and by strengthening these moves, then it will just help you overall in the long run, even if you feel like you're already fantastic at it. And again, I will mention yoga because it just has been so helpful in doing all of these moves and doing some single leg moves and you're feeling your foot really grip the ground through those three points. So by either holding the pose or doing a yoga flow and that really helps with mobility and with your hips, incorporating yoga if you are somebody who loves to strength train I think is super important and just try it out and I think you will absolutely love it. But my last tip, which you might not like to hear as much, especially if you do still want to squat while you are working on strengthening and getting rid of your knees from caving in, is to go lighter on the weight. Like I mentioned at the start, it's something that I've noticed in myself if I think I can put on more weight because I feel good. And then on my way back up, I'm like, oh, I noticed my knees caved in a little bit that they couldn't really handle it and my hip adductors had to take over and that's when I realized like even if I think I can do it clearly my body is not prepared for that so by going lighter in the weight even if you don't want to and really focusing on the move properly focusing on the right muscles focusing on the right form the good range of motion and just feeling really good throughout the entire move is key and then once you have that strengthened you're feeling good and you are feeling mobile you're doing all of these different moves then you can slowly start to reintroduce the weight that way you get back up to that weight that you were doing, but you're doing it with good form. You're not risking injury in your hips, knees, ankles, feet, well, thank you. Well, there you have it. Those are my tips on how to stop your knees from caving in. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below what tips you have and what else you want to see here on my channel. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe. I upload a new video every Wednesday. So until the next one, thanks for watching.